Hello, Ken Weller with New Tech Inventors. I've been working and uh, printing the lap diner parts, and this is basically the tray, the folding tray for the lap diner. And then, of course, there's some other parts that go with this, which is the uh, cup holder that swivels out and the uh, strap and the holders for the strap but this part is somewhat difficult to print I've tried printing it in different colors of filament I printed it on the glass bed this one was printed on the glass bed and it gives a glossy finish the only problem is that if on that first layer if you have any little discrepancies at all you see that and I didn't like the looks of it because I wasn't getting a real glossy finish I guess I could do something like maybe do a little finish like a sandpaper or something to put a little grain on this gloss finish to conceal any little lines that show up or I could just try to let it go as it is I mean it's still functional and everything it's just hard to get the cosmetics good on this so I thought well I'll use the get off the glass and go to the um, bed which has a little bit of texture to it. It's not glossy like this. But with that one, I have different kind of problems with this. Sometimes with this larger part being flat like this and being fairly thick, so it's strong, it's a little more difficult to keep the corners from lifting. You don't want to get too much adhesion because on those surfaces you don't get the same release that you get on a glass bed. On the glass bed these just pop off once the bed cools down. But on those textured beds even after they cool down sometimes they're they're difficult to get off. So I've been experimenting around a little bit using some glue on those textures bed, beds, water glue mixture, not to increase adhesion, but actually to help retard the adhesion so that they don't become too fixed to it. Because on this large surface, when you have a heated bed, the temperature at the core or the center is going to get a lot warmer than the exterior corners and sometimes it will draw and that will cause these corners to lift slightly once they start to lift then you're not going to have a, a very good product you don't want that to happen and if they lift enough pretty soon they'll start messing up the upper layers here even though there's not a whole lot this isn't a very tall part but still I've run into problems and once that head starts dragging on a corner it can cause them create a problem mess up the inside finish then so there are problems with 3d printing this particular or these two parts for this lap diner in the beginning when I designed this I knew that this was not a product that I wanted to manufacture using 3D printing. I made the prototypes, I did the 3D printed prototypes and I did them in a way that I realized that this would be a fairly simple mold for an injection molding machine and I felt like well that part needs to be injection molded. So I looked into that and found out that 
depending on the mold, and there are different molds that you can purchase. Some are like aluminum materials, which are less expensive for them to make the mold, but they only can make so many parts. Those molds wear out a lot quicker. So you may only get 10,000 parts out of a mold if it's aluminum or something, maybe less than that, depending on what you're printing. And whereas if you go with a, a standard mold, one that's made out of a harder steel material, it will last a lot longer. You can make 50,000 or 100,000 parts with it, but it costs more. And the difference in cost can be a, from around eight to $10,000 for the less expensive mold, or you can pay ten to twenty thousand dollars for the more expensive mold. Then, in addition to that, when your injection molding company uh, runs those parts for you, they aren't going to run a hundred or two hundred. That it would be too expensive to do that. So once they set up and everything, they want to run several thousand parts and that gives you the best price for the parts. So when you put all that together, the first run of injection molding on this, I figured was going to cost me somewhere around twenty to $25,000 minimum. Well, what if nobody wants this? What if this turns out to be a flop? Then I'm stuck with the investment and all these lap diners. I guess I could donate them. But on the other hand, I could, and my son suggested to me that, well, why don't you, since you can 3D print them, why don't you go ahead and 3D print a bunch of them and see what the demand is. And if the demand's good enough, then go to injection molding. So that sounded like a good idea. So I started 3D printing these and I didn't want to just do a bunch of orange. I wanted to do some brown and I wanted to do some blue and I wanted to do some red and some different colors so people would have a choice. And I wanted to also have different color straps or belts that attach to them. So I bought a bunch of belt material and everything. So I've got all the materials, but I found that 3D printing these things, like I said, I've just been having a, a lot more problems with trying to get the texture and the finishes right and get them 3D printed. So I'm um, second thinking that I am going to go ahead and get some out there, but I'm probably not going to be able to get very many of them. And I don't want to waste a lot of time right now. I want to start, I've been spending a lot of time on that. I want to get back to the helping hand and do more promotion on this and try to get more of these assembled and sold and shipped and out the door. So much about that. So until the next time, happy printing from New Tech Inventors.